Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, you'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set. And I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. The much-anticipated Fox News interview with Kamala Harris and Brett Baer yesterday, wow, there were some pretty testy moments between Baer and the vice president. We have the highlights and some of my analysis and your feedback for you today. The Biden-Harris administration received some bad news today as well. The 2022 crime data that they've been using to argue that violent crime has decreased, have you heard that? Have you heard both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris talking about how violent crime has decreased during the Biden-Harris administration? Well, it was wrong. (laughs) The FBI has quietly corrected to show that the 2.1% decrease they have been talking about was actually a 4.5% increase. We have those details. And another major chain store announced store closing. This time, it's Walgreens who says that the Nationwide Pharmacy will close 1,200 U.S. stores by 2028. And Bill O'Reilly's latest book is out. It's another bestseller, Confronting the President's No-Spin Assessments from Washington to Biden. It is a great read, and I had a chance to visit with Bill recently. I'll share part one of a two-part interview with you today. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. The much-anticipated sit-down between Fox News host Brett Baer and Vice President Kamala Harris is in the books. What do you think? Did you watch it? Or did you take me up on my promise to always watch it so you don't have to? (laughs) Things got off to uh, sort of a a bad start. The the vice president entered the room with an obvious chip on her shoulder. She was loaded for bear. You could tell she was in a bad mood. And evidently, she may have had second thoughts. According to Brett Bear afterwards, uh, he told the sort of the inside scoop that she showed up late which took some of their time away. Uh, in a segment following the interview, Bear provided a behind-the-scenes look leading up to the interview, saying that she was late and her team whittled down the agreed-upon interview slot. He said, we were supposed to start at 5. This was the time they gave us. Originally, we were going to do 25 or 30 minutes. They came in and said, well, maybe 20. So it was already getting whittled down, he said. He added that the vice president turned up at 5.15 rather than 5 with her tardiness putting pressure on her team to edit the interview in time to be aired at 6 p.m. Now, it was not edited. They they taped it and they aired it as it was taped, but meaning that they had to get it ready to turn around to be ready for, for a live show at 6 p.m. Uh he, he explained how they were rushing him to wrap it up. And you could see this. You could tell during the interview, I could see Brett Baer looking off over her shoulder at something. I couldn't figure out what it was. He explained afterwards what distracted him. Dana, you've been on the other side. You've been on the, the rapper as a uh, press secretary interviewing a, a president. And, you know, I'm talking like four people waving their hands like it's got to stop. Uh, so, Martha, final. Yeah, um, I had to dismount there at the end. There's so many things, and she maybe should do more of these. Well, you know, she probably should, but I can guarantee you she won't do another one like that. Uh, The two top topics in the 2024 presidential race is, number one, illegal immigration. Number two, the economy. Harris failed miserably on both issues. And let's start with the illegals flooding across the border, including the criminals. The thugs who were terrifying cities across America. It was a simple question that that Brett Baer asked her. How many illegals would you estimate your administration has released into the country? And this is where it got a little testy. 
How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a is, number. Do you but, think it's but, one million, three million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and, Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, I'm not, I'm of not apprehensions... Finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have it's an a rough immigration estimate system of 6 million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours of taking the oath, the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before, any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen, and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was and, essentially and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, may I finish? May I finish responding, but please? Here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising, okay. and I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question... It is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. And from day one, then, we have done a number of things. Wow. Fixing the problem. From day one, we've done a number of things. I'll tell you what you've done. You open our borders wide open to the point that we have millions and millions of people. We'll never know who they are. And they're here ransacking some of our cities. I mean, she couldn't answer because she doesn't want to admit the truth. She doesn't want to admit that they have done the the biggest harm to our country ever. Moving on, Bayer confronted Harris with the horrible tragedies of innocent Americans being killed by these illegal thugs that, that Harris has allowed to come across the border. She kept deflecting, claiming that Congress has not acted because President Trump had told him not to. She would never answer the question on whether she thinks it was a mistake for she and Joe Biden to totally reverse the Trump border policies. Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lakin Riley Sunday, campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lakin Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, This is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, do you owe those families an apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a board of security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together Madam Vice President. to ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares 
more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will. She would never accept that, and she'd never answer the question. Bayer gave her one more chance to apologize to the family of the young girl who was brutally murdered by one of these these thugs who's come into our country. Uh, he played a clip of the mother blaming the Biden Harris administration. And I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the alternatives to detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. But let's talk about what is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's talk about that as well. But do you want to answer In all fairness, I told you, I feel awful. But not badly enough to say, hey, I'm sorry, and we made a mistake. More of the Brett Bear interview coming up next. This year, I really thought I was going to have to boycott the holidays. I was going to lock myself away and not come out until 2025. But after finding PhD weight loss, you can bet I'll be at every holiday party I'm invited to. That's because PhD weight loss helped me take control with great confidence, support, and my new healthy body. The best part? PhD Weight Loss did it all without harmful drugs that keep you dependent on them to maintain your weight loss. It's a natural, medication-free approach to weight loss crafted to naturally diminish food-related thoughts, hunger, and cravings, making your weight loss journey more sustainable and enjoyable. Take it from me, I lost 33 pounds. The PhD Weight Loss Program teaches you not just what to eat and when, but also how to think differently about food and finally let go of those cravings and get rid of the hunger naturally. Don't lock yourself away this holiday season. Call PhD Weight Loss today at 864-644-1900. That's 864-644-1900 or go to myphdweightloss.com. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Continuing today's show and our sort of post analysis of the Brett Bear conversation with vice president kamala harris i'd love to get your take on it some of you have texted me and i'll share some of those texts with you uh, a little bit later in today's show uh, your opinion of it but did you watch or did you wait and let me watch for you to give you my thoughts today it got real testy at times you could tell just what an angry woman kamala harris is and i could tell you that there were times that i'm sure she's sitting there thinking why did I do this? Why did I put myself in this situation? Now, Brett Bear was always a gentleman. He's very calm. But what she doesn't or, or what she's not accustomed to is follow-up questions and someone challenging her when she offers one of her word salad uh, answers and when she doesn't answer the question with specifics, when she deflects and she, and she always turned the conversation back around to, to Donald Trump. It was always something that Donald Trump had done wrong. Now, I understand as a candidate, you have to contrast yourself with your opponent, the person you're running against. But this was a prime opportunity for Kamala Harris to tell Americans, and particularly the Fox News audience, the largest cable news audience that she'll ever reach. She'll never, I mean, MSNBC and some of the others don't even come close to matching the audience that Fox News has. I would imagine there's probably a lot of independence in there too. And I, I would guess that's why she decided to finally do the interview because she's in the panic mode. She understands that she's behind and she needs to reach out to some of the independents, some of the common sense Americans who watch Fox news. So this was an attempt for her to try to reach them. I think she failed miserably. What about you? Text me, email me, joey, joeyhudson.com. You know, this week we have followed the federal courts mandating that prisoners be given sex changes 
using taxpayer dollars. This is a travesty. This makes me angry just thinking about it. Uh, There's a case in California where Kamala Harris has very much supported the use of publicly funded sex change surgery for inmates. Another case that's been in the headlines is in Indiana, where state officials are fighting a federal case there. I mean, it's just crazy that these liberal federal judges are forcing, of course, in in California, they weren't forcing. California voluntarily did it, uh, and and Kamala Harris has, has supported it all along. But in other cases, states have opposed it, and you've had some liberal federal judge coming in and saying, you know, this guy thinks he's a woman, so you've got to, you've got to offer him surgery. It's just crazy. Bayer, again, tried to get Harris to commit on a position, reminding her that she's been very clear, and several times she would say that, you know, let's be clear. Well, he tried to let her be clear on whether or not she supports these surgeries at the taxpayer dollar expense. She would only claim that as president, she'll follow the law. So are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, You're probably familiar with now it's a public report that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to on a medical necessity basis to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing, you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition. Well, you know what, you've got to take responsible for what happened in your administration. Yeah, no surgeries happened in this presidency. So would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment surgeries? I will follow the law, just as I I, I think Donald Trump would say he did. You would have a say as president. I, like I said, I think it's re- he spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters. The ads that she's talking about is, is Trump has been airing spots, and, and they played one of them during, the, uh, during this interview last night. Trump has spent a lot of money placing these ads primarily in football games, and it's highlighting her support her idiotic support that our tax dollars should pay for these sick individuals who are in a a federal prison to get a sex change. And then they're moved over to a women's prison. There's also a key point in there, though, where she says you have to be responsible for what happened in your administration. I hope that the Trump campaign picked up on that, and I hope that ends up in an ad, too, because she's right. And that's our job is to hold her responsible and accountable for what she and Joe Biden have done to our country. And and by the way, for the record, it was confirmed no surgeries happened under Donald Trump. The first one took place in 2022. And guess who was vice president at the time? As they moved over to the economy, uh, the top issue among voters, Bayer asked the vice president, why more people trust President Trump on the economy than her? It's a simple question. Uh, she responds by saying that the experts, like like the, the Wall Street Journal folks and, and all those, are smarter than the American people, that they understand what it takes uh, for a to drive a future economy. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they trust you? I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as president of the United States. It has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump. People are ready to chart a new way forward and they want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. Don't you find it interesting as she keeps talking about Trump? Talk about your plan then. If your plan is this great, why not tell us about it? Rather than talking about how bad Trump is, tell us about about your plans. Bayer reminds her that she's been vice president for three and a half years and that she has to be responsible, reminding her that more than 70% of Americans say the country's on the wrong track. She keeps talking about turning the page. 
She's been the vice president for three and a half years. Here's this final exchange. Frankly, exhausted of Brett. More than 70% of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I president. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people have become. Power. But listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY. That's 864-477-5639. Email's always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you can trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Uh, one more thing before we move on to some of your text messages and your feedback. Uh, this was a classic. When B- Brett Baer last night asked... <laughs> If the American people are stupid for supporting Trump, uh, and, and if, if he's as bad as she says he is. Now, she immediately said, well, I've never called the American people stupid. But that's kind of what she's doing, isn't it? When she keeps just, she just kept trying to deflect and come back around to, uh, you know, orange, orange man bad, orange man bad, rather than taking that time last night to tell us about her policies. And the reason she didn't, she doesn't have any solutions. She knows that. So the only thing she can do is to try to just keep hammering Donald Trump and hope that Americans are stupid <laughs> and that they vote for her. Here's that. Here's his final exchange I want to share with you. Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's not it's supposed as... to be. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within an enemy within, talking about the American people. Suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. <laughs> That's a classic. Are they stupid? Are they misguided? Are they stupid? And she could oh, I would never say that. That's what she thinks. She thinks that the American people are stupid. That's why she keeps traveling around the country with these no answer answers thinking, well, you know, they're not smart enough to know that I'm really not answering their question. They're really not smart enough to know that I don't have a plan. I'll tell you who's stupid. It's anyone who's even considering voting for this lady. And I don't take that lightly because Nana Hudson would never let me call someone stupid. <laughs> Nana, I'd be in trouble if Nana Hudson heard me call someone stupid. I think Nana will give me a pass on this one, though, because Just hear me when I say this. If you're thinking about voting for Kamala Harris, you're stupid. It's just that simple. 
Moving on to some of your texts. Uh, Ray writes on the text line, uh, just a quickie, Joey. The media made a big deal out of Jimmy Carter at 100 voting for Harris and the Dumbo. However, my mother at 100 just canceled it out with a vote for President Trump and J.D. Vance. Well, thank your mother, Ray. You've got a you got a smart mother there. And uh, congratulations, 100. Wow. Tony says, Joey, did you see the interview with Brett? Oh, my gosh, it was horrible, and people were actually wanting that lady to be president. Only idiots would vote for her after this horrible interview. Uh, you're right, Tony. You are you are nice calling them idiots. I say they're stupid. Uh, text her. Uh, let's see. This is Jennifer. Finally, a real interview with Kamala. And what did she do? Get angry? Talk about Donald Trump. No answers. Folks ain't going to buy it. What an amateur. She ought to study the new kid in town, J.D. Vance. Brett Baer was great. Uh, you're right, Jennifer. I mean, she had a great opportunity there, and she did get angry. Boy, I mean, that woman, she, she you could see fire in her eyes a couple of times. And, and by the way, and we haven't had a chance to really talk about it, but the speech that she gave in Washington uh, Crossing in Pennsylvania, boy, she got very nasty in that, in that speech as well just basically saying that Donald Trump is not capable of being president. Uh, Sherry writes on the text line, Joey, I watched the interview on Fox with Brett and Cackling Kamala for a very short while. It makes me so anxious to watch stuff like that, so I depend on you to review it and tell us your thoughts. Uh, you're, you're right, Sherry. You don't have to watch it because I'm, I'm going to watch it for you. Uh, having said that, I would like to know why doesn't anyone blatantly say the reason they want the borders open is so they can water down this country and have a one-party government like California. And I feel like the Democrats, uh, ha-ha, want one world order. One more thing, the 750 that FEMA is supposedly giving families affected by Helene, what is that exclamation point? Groceries are so high, I'm sure a family of four s spends more than that just to eat. It's maddening that this administration keeps sending billions and billions overseas, yet Kamala claims she's running and concerned for the Americans. And why do some of the Republicans go along with it? Well, Sherry, you know, the, the, the group of Republicans that Kamala Harris mentioned multiple times during her interview, and some of them were on stage with her, and evidently they, they were with her at the interview. She, she referenced them as well. They're people who hate Donald Trump, because he didn't bow to them. He didn't uh, allow them to influence what he was doing. And some of them have such big egos when he just ignored their advice, they just quit. It's like, you know, like a child taking his, his toy and going home, not wanting to play in the sandbox. It's not that they are concerned about our country. It's a personality uh, conflict with Donald Trump. Uh, texter Albert says, uh, Georgia Senator Warnock stated on CNN that ballot counting will cause voter suppression. I sent his office an email asking him to show the proof to back up his comment. I'll let you know his response. I voted yesterday, and from what I could see by the turnout, there isn't any voter suppression taking place. The people working the poll in Lincoln County, Georgia, seem to be very professional in their duties. And as I understand it, there's a record number still uh, of voters uh, yesterday as voting started in georgia on tuesday if you're in western north carolina or in north carolina in general uh, particularly in western north carolina uh, find a polling place because they're open today voting starts in, in north carolina today so don't get distracted go ahead and head out to the polls Appreciate your comments on the text line uh, yours is always welcome your emails are welcome as well joey at joey hudson Dot com one uh, one piece of information here the uh, the Biden Harris administration had sort of a bad day yesterday you know one of the issues that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden often talk about is crime Joe Biden loves to puff his, his chest out and talk about how crime has decreased during his administration well the Federal Bureau of Investigation our, our friends in the FBI quietly updated its 2022 crime data that shows there was actually an increase in violent crimes despite previous data showing violent crimes had fallen that year. And that's what we've heard Kamala Harris talking about on the campaign trail. 
is that violent crime has decreased. Our friend John Lott over at the Crime Prevention Research Center said, for some reason, the media, they did pick the crime data that they think goes and makes the Democrats look as good as possible. And then even when the crime data that they relied on turns out by the very source of that data to be wrong, none of them fix it. No, you're not going to you're not going to see this on the mainstream media, but you're hearing it here. The FBI released its annual crime in the nation data for 2022 last year, which found a 2.1% decrease in violent crime compared to 2021. The data was just uh, was applauded by Democrats. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris has repeated it over and over. Now the data reflects a net increase of over 80,000 violent crimes in 2022 over 2021. Uh, Lott found that under the umbrella of violent crime, there were an additional 1,699 murders, 7,780 rapes that were not previously reported, 33,459 robberies, and 37,091 aggravated assaults that year. They have had to increase their overall to a 4.5% increase. But boy, you haven't heard the bells and the whistles you haven't heard the mainstream media really uh pushing this out there in fact i would challenge you to even find it on one of the mainstream media sites up next bill o'reilly's latest books out it's another bestseller confronting the president's no spin assessments from washington to biden it's a great book i've read it i'll share with you part one of a two-part interview with bill o'reilly coming up your comments are welcome on the Furman ford text line 864-477-joey that's 864-477-5639 Emails always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. The Bill O'Reilly Factor was the highest rated cable news broadcast in the nation for 16 consecutive years now. His website, BillOReilly.com, is followed by millions all over the world. And Bill can still be seen on his No Spin News weeknights and heard on the O'Reilly Update on more than 225 radio stations across the country. And somehow, Bill has managed to author 18 number one ranked nonfiction books, including the Historical Killing series. The best-selling nonfiction series of all times with over 19 million books in print. Bill joins us today to talk about his latest book, Confronting the President's No Spin Assessments from Washington to Biden, already number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Bill, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me back, Joey, and I'm glad you cited that. We'll be number one on Sunday on the Times list. So that's a world record now, 19 times. And it must give that newspaper great joy to put me up there don't you think uh, 19 times <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm sure it's, it's a pleasure for them as well <laughs> right uh you know every time that i see where you're releasing another book bill i think no way does he do better than the last but i have to say and, and being a history buff confronting <laughs> the presidents is my favorite let's start with who is your favorite president lincoln um boy did he uh have it tough. Um, I have pictures of him when he rolled into Washington um, after he was elected. And then four years later, you wouldn't know it was the same human being. Wow. So yeah. obviously he kept the nation together by winning the Civil War. But his young son dies. His wife is a nut. Um, and all through it, he maintains his dignity, his focus. Um, so he is far and away, I believe, um, the best president we've ever had. And he's my personal favorite. Yeah. One of my first observations, uh, you know, we often uh, talk about, complain a bit about how nasty politics are today. But, you know, you read about some of those early races in in our nation's history. Things got pretty nasty back then, didn't they? They just didn't have the 24-hour news cycle and social media to fuel the flame. Oh, listen, when Washington left uh, after two terms, it was John Adams, his vice president, against Thomas Jefferson, secretary of state. Brutal. They they just went after each other and their surrogates went after each other. It was terrible. And from then on in, we've had that tradition in this country. Some people think it's good, but I think there's got to be boundaries to it. Uh, and certainly in our country today, there are no boundaries. So you can uh, demonize uh, politicians. You can defame them, smear them. And there's something unsettling about that to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Uh, you and Martin Dugard do some amazing research in, in writing uh, Confronting the Presidents. 
The two of you uncover many never-before-seen historical facts based on private correspondence, uh, newly discovered documentation. Uh, Give us a few examples and and talk with us about what may have surprised you most about some of our previous presidents. Um, Well, Lyndon Johnson surprised me the most because I was alive, you know, when he took over for JFK. And, uh, you know, know, uh, did some good things in the civil rights area, but, boy, he was corrupt. And the more we started looking at him, the more corrupt he got, Joey. Wow. And when you read that chapter, you're going to go, and the press just ignored it. Um, because that's what the way the press uh, was and remains. If the press is rooting for you to win, then they're going to not report the things that are going to make you look bad. So, Johnson, that surprised me. And then we have other anecdotes like William Howard Taft got stuck in the bathtub 350 pounds. <laughs> wow. And the uh, White House valet had to go in and rescue him from drowning in the tub. And what did Taft do? He got a bigger tub. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> cut back on the calories. And, and we have stories like that on every single president. Washington's mother uh, didn't like him and, and wrote letters to the Virginia press saying, my son George is starving me. It drove him crazy. He did not even go to her funeral. And then we have the modern presidents like uh, Warren Harding, whose campaign is exactly the same as Kamala Harris's campaign in that Harding wouldn't talk to anybody. He just waved from the porch in Marion, Ohio. Hey, how you doing? And Americans elected him because they were fed up with Woodrow Wilson and the Democrats for eight years. That was World War One. And Harding gets in and he's the worst. He's horrible. And so it's a cautionary tale. If you don't know about someone, be very careful if you cast a ballot for them. Yeah, yeah. On our guest line today, Bill O'Reilly, uh, we're talking about his latest uh, bestseller, Confronting the Presidents, No Spin Assessments from Washington to Biden. Be sure and pick up a copy at your favorite bookseller. Uh, the thing I like the most about the book, uh, you not only write about their politics, Bill, but you give us sort of an inside look at their personal lives, uh, what they like to eat, what they like to drink, uh, some of their hobbies when they're not working, um, how well they made decisions under pressure. Talk with us about some of those personalities. So I wanted to humanize all of all 45 men uh, because we mythologize them or demonize them in this country. And people don't know who they are. So, for example, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, one of my favorite presidents, uh, he lived uh, about 10 miles away from where I live, and I'm talking to you right now. And you couldn't call him Teddy, though. And I didn't know that. Um, he, did, he despised being called Teddy. He had to call him Colonel or Theodore or Mr. President. Called him Teddy, he just showed you to the door. <laughs> um, he had a real hard time with his oldest daughter, a teenager, Alice. Alice is smoking in the White House. He's trying to sneak boys in. And... I put that in there so that Americans know that these presidents had the same problems, the family problems Mm -hmm. that most Americans have. And and it's important as a historian for me to humanize these people, even, you know, presidents that I'm not fond of. We tried to bring in, uh, they're not all bad. You know, they, they're, it's, it's, uh, strengths and weaknesses. I don't rank them, Joey. I let the reader do that. But it's clear when I write, you know, whether I believe that they were effective or not. Yeah. And, and you really do. You bring them to life. And as I read through the book and, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm a history buff. I've read a lot on presidents, but I don't know that I've ever read a book that just really uh, brought them to life the way uh, you do. And give me some of that some of the inside stories and some of the things, because, you know, in the end, we're all human and we, we like to think, well, that those were the good old days, but people did some of the same crazy things that they do today. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Um, we had, uh, a lot of chaotic presidents and a lot of corrupt presidents and we got through it. And that's another theme that even though we are as divided a nation uh, now, as we've ever been, the Civil War was worse, but this is second now. Um, we got through it. Yeah. And I think we'll get through this, but the vote in November is very, very important, and people should not underestimate the importance of it.
And Bill is right. Yes, November is very important. We must get out and vote. If you're in Western North Carolina, today is your first day of early voting. Georgia started earlier in the week. Be sure and vote, folks. Be sure and join us again tomorrow for part two of my conversation with Bill O'Reilly. And get a copy of the book. It is a great read. You'll love it if you love history and particularly the history of presidents. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because if we're going to build our community and if we're going to win in November, we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to Just the Truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well joey at joeyhudson.com don't forget to take advantage of the my pillow special 25 dollars for the my towels six piece towel set when you use promo code joey just go to mypillow.com always use promo code joey we're back again tomorrow hope you will be too remember god's got this he's still in control